friends and welcome back to Vic Sewing Corner. So at the moment I do not have any sewing projects going on. That is because I've been trying to order fabric but it just isn't available from Joann's for the one that I want. So right now I have no projects but I thought I still need to make a video. How about using some scraps and showing some historical sewing techniques? So if you are really really into um, historical sewing, costuming, whatever you want to call it, what you want to usually do is sew by hand instead of a lovely machine, which would employ historical techniques. Now, I'm by no means an expert on this. Um, it's a hobby of mine. Um, I do my own research, but by no means uh, am I using maybe 100% historical accuracy and you know we don't always know everything that we could so I'm gonna also put in a little disclaimer I don't have any beeswax to wind my thread with and I'm not using linen thread that is because just like the fabric I want for new projects it is not available right now to be shipped so hopefully I shall have some real projects Anon. And without further ado of me rambling on, let's get into this video. So the first stitch that we are going to be doing is called a running stitch. Now this stitch was primarily used for basting, so that is when you want to hold something in place without using pins and it can be easily removed. Or for a hem that really has not a lot of... Or for gathering. So... What you want to do is take your thread, your length of thread, um, put it through the eye. And I don't knot mine because it's not necessarily historically accurate. And so you just leave a long tail. And then what you're going to do is first anchor your thread in place. Now you can do this one of two ways. Um, you can either knot it in place, which would be like this. And then create a little loop. Or you can back stitch it into place. Um, the back stitching is typically more historically accurate for the 18th, 17th century. So now what you're gonna want to do is take your needle and you're going to just poke it into your fabric and come up. That is one stitch. So now the great thing about the stitch is that it is very, very fast. And so the way to properly do that would be doing a couple stitches at a time. So you grab the fabric, pull it through, So you can do quite a bit and then you want to make sure that you pull it straight and taut unless you are gathering in which case it can pucker but as you can see you can do this stitch quite quickly so there you go, that's the running stitch. And if we look and turn it the other way, you can see that it is not super strong and it can come undone easily and be cut undone, but it is also strong enough for a weaker seam. The next stitch that we are going to perform is called the back stitch. Now this was used for places where you needed a strong seam and this was very similar to if you had a sewing machine nowadays, stitch it pretty strong. So if you want to just do a single um, thread, I guess, sort of to say, um, stitch, single loop, what I do is I measure about, about double the length of my um, seam, just because with the back stitch, you'll see it takes more 
thread than a normal running stitch. So once again, we're going to anchor this into place one way or another. So in this one, I'm anchoring it with a back stitch. There we go. Okay. So now to perform this back stitch, what you're going to want to do is come out is you're going to insert your needle where you last made your stitch or in this case where you anchored your thread into and you're going to want to come out just a little bit after so ah. so these stitches were typically very small unless you were doing a loose one so pull the fabric taut right where you last stitched And I'm also trying to keep my fabric quite taut while doing this. Now when I turn this one inside out, you can see comparably it is much much stronger um, of a seam. So that is what it looks like. Our next stitch is called a running back stitch, which combines elements from both the running stitch and the back stitch. Now this would be used for um, places where you don't need necessarily the strongest of seams um, and you also want to save a little bit of time but you do need a little bit of the strength that comes with a back stitch. So now to start it we're just going to anchor the thread in place like we would do with any other stitch. So. Now to start the running back stitch we are just going to act like it's a normal running stitch. And we're going to And after a couple of stitches, we're going to pull it out. And now, after a couple of running stitches, we are going to perform a back stitch. And so the purpose of this is if you have a fabric um, after doing this, if the seam were to come loose, only part of it would come. So right there. Now we would continue our running stitch again. And now we would perform another back stitch and you would go like this um, for the duration of your seam or whatever you're sewing. And then I tie that off. And if we look at the seam, it is fairly strong, um, but not quite as strong as the back stitch. So that's the running back. 
Now the final stitch is called a felling stitch or more commonly known in present day as a whip stitch. And this was used by tailors. This was also um, mainly used to finish hems. So what we're gonna do is anchor our thread in place just like any other stitch. For this one, I'm using more of a linen fabric, but uh, I also pinned it into place because I folded my material over twice so that I can have a nice hem. Okay, so for this, what we're gonna wanna do is go just a little bit under and just grab a tiny bit of fabric from the edge. And this is because it's gonna show on the other side, so we wanna limit that as much as we can. And of course my sewing is not the best out there um, and probably not the most historically accurate. But if you're looking to do a project at home, this is just the basics. And that is obviously would blend in a lot better with the correct colored thread, but this would be a hem made with a felling stitch. So that was some very basic historical stitching. I really hope that everybody learned from this video. And if you want any other small little projects I can do while I'm waiting, for the fabric for my bigger projects, please comment down below. And like and subscribe really does help out.